membranes for fast water evaporation, and then uh, we should have a potential application for desalinating and the water uh, is not separation. And then finally, I will show you a couple of examples about uh, a north based membrane for color separation. So um, let me begin by uh, uh, showing some of the uh, work in the, down in, in, the, uh, in the area about the nanofluidic membranes. So uh, you can see from uh, this slide, so there's a lot of work being done in this space. You know, um, the uh, material I've uh, been looking at, you know, including polymers, so here, the uh, PET nano channel, for example, it, it can, uh, can be a very, very fine channel, you know, so nanometer, even sub nanometer. So with a different functional group, so the channel you know, uh, has a very different uh, uh, transport properties as compared with the other, um, the amorphous material, so the core, you know, with uh, the irregular uh, channels. And uh, also the um, other materials, right? The uh, polymers uh, uh, can be made into the nanopores, yeah, with a even functional group. And also, um, you know, the uh, nano sheets, especially uh, built from the nano two um, D nano materials, right? So it can have a very narrow, uh, very narrow, uh, the slit like um, pores, and then the material will have a very uh, interesting properties and uh, of course you know you can actually uh, draw the hold on the nano shades and uh, you can have a very thin uh, membranes um, and then that can transport different ions and the molecules of course you know there are the kind of a bio inspired uh, membrane structure so you have uh, um, the nano nano tube uh, with the peptide you know combined of the structure you know that shows uh, very interesting uh, properties and also the um, middle organic framework here. You know, there's uh, many, many different type of middle organic framework, and, and then over 70,000 structure been, uh, has been reported. And uh, um, you know, here the, a couple of example. You know, like zip A, they has a pore size of 3.4, and the UR66 has a, a pore size, window size 6.6 .6 angstroms. So there are. Um, so here, you know, um, we, we're particularly interested in the uh, small pores, especially a sub two nanometer or even sub one nanometer pores, right? So that can be uh, constructed by using a lot of different materials, right? And then the uh, here, you know, I, I'm just uh, focus on the middle organic frame form of materials, MOF, and uh, uh, so we have done uh, 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 some work on the MOF membranes for different applications, you know, starting from a gap separation. So that's our earlier work, you know, we're still doing that. And also uh, water desalination, basically for the water and you know, uh, the transport, right? And uh, ion separation, so um, that's our, our, one of the uh, main uh, uh, focus, you know, the, on the, on the, um, on the uh, MOF membrane and, uh, and then the uh, chiral separation. So, Basically, uh, we have been looking at you know, the material, you know, and how do we functional the material for different uh, application. So the, um, the here, you know, there's a, a an example, you know, mu one to one. So you have a pore size is about uh, eight point seven angstrom, and then as I mentioned, you know, you are six, six, you know, so it has a window size of six angstrom, right? And then the um, so uh, there are a number of factors actually in uh, determining the uh, ion transport uh, separation properties. So uh, the size size is very important. Size is very important. Um, the so you, you probably heard the, the plenary uh, talking yesterday. You know, so, and uh, um, the size is very important. You know, so you have have uh, need to have a very small size in order to see the uh, uh, size the nano uh, uh, confinement, right? And then another one is the wettability. Of course, you know, you will need to see the molecule and ion can go into the material, right? And then the uh, charge density, charging you know, of its distribution is also very important, especially when you have a very small pores and uh, um, the, the kind of, you know, electro double layer of the ions and overlap with the uh, little size, right? So then the, uh, the surface charge and the surface function group is very important. And then another factor is the binding affinity. So if you have a different functional group, 
right? So, uh, as Sohong, Sohong Acid Group and a uh, um, Kapakistani Acid Group, for example. So, they have a different uh, affinity with different ions, right? So, we have done a lot of work in this space, you know. So, we look at, uh, you know, what I see for either, you know, for the monovan ion separation uh, and then the monovan ion to divan ion uh, metal ion selectivity. And then we uh, have uh, found uh, the uh, UR66 uh, with, uh, you know, uh, function, functionalized group, you know, uh, has a, um, the fluoride, you know, uh, selectivity. And also we look at different driving force, you know, we um, look at the light response to ion gating, you know, uh, in a more structure. And also we look at other, you know, material like a maxine, so we can use voltage actually to uh, control the gating of the ion transport. So um, they're quite interesting. So I'll just show you one example in this uh, um, work in, uh, published in uh, 2018, two or three years ago. So basically I show this in many, uh, in my talk, you know, many times. And uh, so basically if you have Z for eight and then you actually you can see the, some of the uh, metal uh, ion, especially monovalent ion selectivity. So uh, the sequence of this, you know, actually is a uh, sequence of the, the size, dehydrated ion size. So the model you show that so the um, the ion actually experienced experience, uh, the dehydration you know, during the transport. Because, and like a biological uh, system, because the biological pores are very short, in, right? But you know, in the morph, you know, um, you have like a hundred nanometer, a few hundred nanometer. So you will have a, a lot of uh, a structure like this. You have a narrow, narrow window, and then you have a cage, and then you have a narrow window. So the process is just uh, repeating itself, you know, and dehydration, hydration, and then rehydration. So, and then interestingly, the, uh, this kind of material actually has a higher um, ion transport selectivity. Sorry, the uh, ion transport rate, you know, it's uh, uh, comparable to a uh, biological ion channel, um, right? So the the reason I just want to show you the, the previous example of actually, you know, uh, the um, now actually uh, there's a, a experimental uh, tool, you know, available, you know, the, uh, to measure the ion dehydration in the polymeric channel. So, and this is some more recent work, you know, and uh, so um, they also, you know, use the time uh, flight uh, secondary ion mass in spectrometry uh, to measure the uh, ion dehydration in the polyamide membranes. So this, the, uh, this is uh, basically the, how uh, the ion um, dehydration is measured, right? So you have a, a detector, you have a signal like this. And then to the, in the end, you know, you can see the, uh, the uh, salty water, you know, permeates through the uh, uh, polymer membranes, you know, that's the before filtration and then after filtration. So you can see the the number of the, uh, the hydration number actually decreases. That means, you know, the uh, the ion, sodium ion actually experience the dehydration in the polymer uh, membrane. So that's a really uh, experimental evidence, you know, so that actually it yeah, does happen, you know, dehydration does happen in the uh, uh, ion transport process, right? And uh, so let me just show you the, uh, the morph based channel for uh, proton selectivity production uh, for the hydrogen energy. So the reason we were interested in this, you know, it's sort of related to the hydrogen economy. So, um, so the hydrogen is important energy carrier, right? So uh, people you know, talk a lot about the uh, hydrogen you know, uh, economy, you know, so, and then how to uh, address the climate change. You know, the, the um, in in this cycle, hydrogen cycle, basically you have a uh, hydrogen production, you know, from a water electrolysis process, and then using uh, um, a renewable energy like uh, um, you know solar, you know, into the wind uh, energy, you know, to produce electricity, right? So so in the uh, electrolyzer, you know, of course there are a lot of different type of electrolyzer, you know, being developed, right? And then the um, the in the uh, electrolyzer with the membrane, you know, so they often, you know, have a better uh, performance and also the size is uh, smaller. So that means you can have a more compact system, you know, more, uh, uh, with a uh, more energy uh, uh, efficiency, right? Another uh, device is a fuel cell space. If you want to convert hydrogen back to electricity, so that's the, the how the, uh, the this, this is going to happen, you know, that's basically using uh, fuel cells. So, 
uh, to convert the CO2, uh, sorry, the hydrogen back to electricity, right? So those, you know, uh, devices are require ion conducting membranes, right? So that's a very important, you know, and then um, in the, uh, the polymer electrolyte membrane, the electrolysis process, right? And then the, um, so you have a membrane basically pro, uh, conduct proton, right? And then you have anode and then you have cathode, right? So water basically coming um, uh, out to the anodes, right? And then the uh, split into the uh, proton, so proton transport through the membrane at the cathode, the hydrogen, uh, hydrogen gas produced, right? And also here at annual you produce you know, oxygen, right? So the interesting you know, in the uh, water electrolysis process, it actually consume a lot of water, you know, and then uh, at the um, you know present you know current system, the the water you know purity is very important. It actually requires high uh, uh, purity water, you know, and uh, for the system to to work, you know, to last longer. And and then the the question is. Um, you know the. You know, how do we actually produce high quality water, especially in the area? You know, so there's short of fresh water supply, right? And then the so looking at the option, you know, other options, for example, using seawater. You know, that's a lot of work being, being done in, in the space in the area, try to using seawater or you know uh, the water it contains other other in, um, impurity, you know, and the different level of the source, right? And then. Now the two questions, two problems, challenges. One is the uh, catalyst, right? So of course, when you have different contaminants, the catalyst, you know, uh, performance will be affected, and then the membrane performance will also be affected. Especially, you know, the uh, the membranes, you know, has a uh, 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 it's just a very uh, common uh, membrane of nephia. So I just want to take this as an example. You know, has a uh, ion exchange capacity, right? So it's from the acid group here, and then the um, when you have a salt there, and then the hydrogen actually the proton actually change with the salt sodium, for example, and then actually slow down the uh, uh, hydrogen uh, proton on the proton transport, right? And then also you go salt onto the cathode, right? That will actually affect the catalyst performance, right? So that's why it's important to have a um, membrane with the uh, proton selectivity against over the other ions, right? So um, the how you know. Can we improve the uh, selectivity of the uh, proton exchange membrane, right? So for the navy ion, you know, it has the pretty low selectivity, so sort of two, one, two, three, something like that. And then we look at the, the biological system in the uh, proton channel, right? So very short channel, and they have a, it has a very a good, uh, you know, um, the selectivity. So especially you know unidirectional uh, like, uh, conduction, you know, so ion proton can transport only from one direction, right? And then the that's actually is a, a, give us a lot of inspiration you know how we can develop the proton uh, selective membrane so and um, coming back to the uh, morphics you know that's what we've been looking at right so if we grow you know mature like a new one to one you know uh, into the pt channel right so we get channel like this so pt has a small uh, nanopores and then the in the mill one to one it has a seven nanometer uh, pores right so we combine two pore system and then, so the the proton can transport from this direction, nano to sub nano, you know, the um, uh, direction. And then the uh, proton and, uh, and the water, you know, would be confined in the uh, morph structure. So that uh, can have a, I think, given us a very interesting properties, right? So uh, in collaboration with a, a professor uh, Wu at the uh, University of Science uh, Tech, uh, and Technology of China, you know, and the from the modeling, you know, MD mod, uh, simulation on the uh, transport of the uh, uh, proton, you know, so basically the, uh, the hybrid, the, the proton uh, through the uh, morphic channel, right? So uh, they look at different structures, you know, mu one to one, so it has a slightly large size, and then mu uh, 53, smaller size, and then the uh, mu uh, 53 with an aiming group, right? So. What they found was that the, um, in the uh, slightly larger channel, you know, the water actually uh, transport as a water chain uh, in, uh, with the pentagonal uh, water structure. And then the, uh, this one, the UO53, you know, actually is a mixture of the tetragonal uh, water structure and then the technical uh, water structures. And then the, for the small, even smaller one, 
It's a mostly uh, tetragonal uh, water structure. So the transfer rate actually decreased, you know, um, from D E to F, right? So that means you know the core size is important, and of course you know the uh, the ligand you know uh, in the in the uh, morph structures so that's the ligand we use for uh, uh, synthesis as a carboxylic as, as a group, right? So that's uh, the kind of facilitated transport process. From this, we can understand uh, you know we needed to have a uh, uh, right pore size and a surface uh, component group, right? So, and then we uh, look at the uh, how the proton transport are through is the three uh, different channels, and then you are uh, one to one, you are fifty three, and you are three, uh, fifty three with a in group, right? So you can see that uh, the larger channel in it has a large current, so that means you know our uh, proton transport faster than others, right? And also we, um, the modeling shows the energy barrier, but that's very consistent. If the ion, uh, proton transport faster, that means that the barrier is, uh, will, will be lower, right? And then the conductivity, in this case, you can see that uh, the um, it's consistent with the uh, current, right? So basically, we calculated from that. So the uh, mu uh, uh, one to uh, one to one has the highest conductivity, right? At the uh, different voltage, right? Okay, so that's that's quite interesting, you know. And then you, uh, when we add add the um, you know, other you know uh, cation in the uh, in this uh, solution, for example, you know we look at the um, uh, the proton and the potassium, proton sodium and proton uh, lithium. So you can see that uh, the the conductivity actually decreased quite significantly. So that means you know as consistent with the uh, what we found in the uh, nickel, right? So when you have the uh, other uh, cation, actually the uh, the proton conductivity actually can uh, increase, uh, decrease uh, very significantly. So, so that's the something we need to uh, to address, right? So how do we actually um, in, uh, you know improve the selectivity in presence of the other cations, right? So another example is the um, the um, if we if we have a UR66, right? So we have a sulfonic acid group. So similarly. And uh, so we can see that uh, the uh, with the functional group, especially with a uh, sulfonic acid group, right? So it has a uh, highest, you know, um, selectivity. So basically, the ratio of the, the current, right? It's a kind of a 40, 40 uh, 70, 74, you know, and then with a uh, any group is about uh, uh, five to six, right? So so we use the sulfonic acid group, you know, it has a, a higher. Uh, um, the selectivity, the you know, uh, proton to the lithium selectivity. So that's a kind of a mixture of the selectivity, right? And uh, so we can see that uh, you know our proton over lithium and uh, our proton over sodium and proton over potassium. So the selectivity is about uh, the um, you know 40 to 50. So we got a, a good selectivity here. But I guess you know I want to point out the um, the, the you know when we high, have higher selectivity. So we we see the um, a lower you know proton conductivity, so that's a, a, something we still need to uh, uh, address. Right? So how do we actually achieve both? It's a common right? It's a kind of uh, selectivity and then the um, flux you know uh, permeability trade-off. Right? So this uh, we see this here, and then that's something we are still working on. Right? And then so uh, change to the other material. Right, and, and the graphene-based uh, uh, membranes. So there's a lot of work being done in this space, right? And uh, so, so nano uh, nano sheets, you know, um, based the membrane. So it's um, the uh, conduct the um, molecular ion transport pathway. You know, it could be from in here or from a nano sheet or from in this uh, uh, interlayers. So that's a different way to the um, transport the uh, molecule and the ions. So that's actually. Uh, you know, bring lots of complexity, complexity uh, in the ion transport, you know, uh, uh, molecular uh, transport. Especially, you know, there's a lot of work, you know, as I said, you know, as this, take this uh, uh, as an example, you know, project in this year, you know, this year. And then um, the uh, geo nano sheets, you know, actually was a, um, a sealed with the uh, Z4H, you know, Z4H seal the, the, the H, right? And then, and then, uh, widen the, uh, the interlayer space so the membrane or you know, geo membrane become much more stable in water and then it has a much higher uh, water flux in the um, in the uh, nano uh, the 
kind of an nano tube of a few pigeon range, right? And then the um, so we summarize the uh, there's a different ways to uh, stabilize the uh, geo membrane uh, in the uh, um, in water, you know. So that, uh, you can actually put in particles, and then you can put a uh, fibers, the nano tube, and nano shield, nano nano sheets, you know, to uh, um, tailor the interlayer spacing and the uh, the uh, the stability, and then you can also add the polyelectrolyte electrolyte with a different charge. And also, even you can add a cation to the uh, cross link of the uh, geo, right? Or you can just form a covalent uh, cross linking, uh, cross linking, and or you know you can use polymer to to um, interwine the uh, geo nano sheets, right? So there's different ways you can you can do this to stabilize geo. So we actually trying to uh, apart from the geo use geo directly. You know we're also trying to uh, reduce the geo, especially you know you uh, thermal um, reduction. Method. So, um, so we, uh, my student, actually uh, trying to use the uh, geo and then grow the uh, uh, the nanoparticles, the pressure blue na nanoparticles onto the uh, geo, and and then and then stack them, and then the uh, uh, three hundred degrees thermal reduction to form a thin layer on the strong substrate. Okay, and uh, so you can see that chemical structure, you know, here on um, the. That's a re, uh, reduced graphene oxide, so it's uh, the contact angle, and then the um, so the, the ratio here in ten basically is a uh, geo, and then four is a nanoparticle. So you can see that with increasing the amount of nanoparticle in the in the membrane, so, so the contact angle the increase slightly, so not not that significant. And then the pore size, you know, you can see the much wider pore size distribution from the uh, few you know, couple. Um, uh, tens of nan uh, nanometer to the uh, around two nanometer range, right? So that's a, 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 a much wider, you know, uh, uh, pore size than the uh, uh, reduced graphene oxide, right? So we look at the, the flux. In this case, so basically, uh, it's a water evaporation flux. You know, and we can see that uh, the uh, the flux, you know, um, the, the feed in our water with a 3.5 percent uh, uh, solvent uh, chloride. So you can see that uh, the flux is quite quite good at the room temperature. You can see that, uh, and then the, um, and then uh, with really increase uh, increasing salt uh, concentration, and then the flux will uh, decrease. Um, yeah. And uh, and then the um, so you can see that uh, the uh, at the uh, temperature range in the temperature range uh, you know room temperature to seventy, so the flux increase you know uh, with increase of temperature. And of course, you know, when you have a, a more salt there, flux increase, right? So that's a comparison with a uh, recently reported um, membranes, you know, for the uh, vacuum uh, membrane uh, distillation and the evaporation. So our membrane from it are pretty, pretty good. You know. um, and then another example is basically we just uh, use a um, uh, geo and then polymer calcium, and then we form a layer onto the ceramic substrate, and then we carbonize at the night pretty high uh, temperature. So we have a thin film on, on the substrate that pro probably at 80 um, uh, nan nanometer uh, thickness, right? And then so, so you can see that from the nitrogen absorption results, so, uh, the, the, the main uh, peak here, the pore size is about four inch from pretty small size. And then the isotherm, you, know, you can see it's a very typical um, microporous material. So it, you can see the, uh, the jump in the absorption at a very low relative pressure, right? And then see the, the absorption doesn't change anymore, right? So the pore structure is like this, you know, the, you have a two uh, different type of uh, carbon nano sheets, you know, the one from an, uh, geo, the other one from polymers. So we, we, we cannot really distinguish, you know, them, you know, and, uh, on uh, using a TEM, so they, uh, they are just so similar, right? So I mean, that, that's kind of. Um, I just want to show you, you know, the um, if we have a different source of the carbon, uh, carbon nanosheets in the membrane. So, um, and then when we look at the uh, membrane performance, right? So the, again, this is a uh, down uh, to the uh, kind of collaboration or you know membrane distillation condition. So basically, we just apply a uh, uh, vacuum slightly. And uh, at room temperature, you can see that uh, our membrane with a different uh, geo to polymer ratio, and then the the flux actually, uh, uh, you know, 
varies right from from around 80 to uh, uh, 300 you know 50 over 350 you know you can see that the membrane surfaces will are treated by a plasma for a very short period of time to improve the um the surface uh, um the uh, hydrophilicity right so when you have a hydrophilic surface the water can go into the uh, graphene nano channel more easily right so this is a kind of a um a, the comparison with a lot of different materials right with different pore size right? <coughs> so i mean that's that's quite quite interesting you know so um we don't really need a, a larger pores to get a, a high flux you know, instead you know we can have a very very small uh, pores you know and, and then we can have a very high flux so in this case we will have a very high selectivity especially the soil rejection when you have a very small pores you know the uh it doesn't matter, you know, what sort of mechanism you have here, uh, it's the size of uh, sieving or, you know, other mechanism, you know, you can actually have almost a complete soil rejection, right? So that's a, a really good about this, um, this membranes. And also we observe, you know, so um, when we uh, um, uh, use the pure water, you know, uh, in, in the experiment, so we can see the pure water can go through it and the salty water, you know, can go through it. Uh, and then when we have the ethanol, you know, what ethanol can go through and then at an even higher information rate. So, but when we mix them together and then the only um, water can go through it. So all, uh, ethanol uh, is a completely rejected. So that's really interesting. You know? so, uh, and, and then we're still trying to work out you know, uh, what might happen you know, during the process, trying to understand the mechanism. And then the, but anyway, that's a very, a very interesting you know, phenomenon, right? So, and this kind of membrane may have a potential, you know, uh, uh, for the uh, ethanol water, you know, separation, especially for the uh, um, uh, dehydration of the bioethanol, right? So in, in the fermentation process, we know that it has a, a lot of water in, 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 in ethanol, right? So lastly, I'll just show you a couple of examples here about the morph based membrane for chiral separation. So chiral uh, separation is very important, you know, so chiral mole objects, molecules, just like our hands in the left hand and right hand. So they um, have a different uh, biological activity, you know, although they have a uh, similar chemical and physical properties. So uh, something like this, and then you have a chiral molecule, you know, it, you know, if you have a three point, you know, a contact, you know, actually uh, they have a very good uh, binding, you know, if you um, have only one or two, you know, it's, it's a less in, um, affinity, right? So that actually affects the, a lot of property of the chiral uh, Molecules, I know we can use this uh, mechanism to separate uh, chiral uh, molecules, right? And then there are a lot of work, you know, being done in the membrane area. So if you use polymers, use a morph, you know, and uh, um, use a two D materials. So and then they've got a different selectivity. So we cannot really compare them, you know, because they they uh, use a separate different uh, chiral molecules. So and then the uh, different pore size. So we cannot really say which one is better than the others. We cannot really say that, right? And then the um, uh, in our lab, you know, we actually we use a um, uh, uh, initially we use the eight, you know, so, and then we functionalize the, we try to introduce the LS histidine, this amino acid, right? So it has a, a coral site. So we introduce that into the uh, uh, Z8 structure, so we can have a coral site, right? And uh, so basically, that's the, what the membrane look like. You know, so the uh, crystals on the air or substrate, and then it's a uh, pretty uh, um, uh, well, you know, crystallized particles, right? Crystals in the integral on the on the substrate surface, right? So the way we test the membrane basically is very simple way. We just use a color uh, solution, um, and then it's a solvent. In this case, we uh, look at the phenylethanol, and then you can see the size size is a. Uh, depending on which way you look at you know size you know uh, it's different right uh, but anyway it's uh, larger than the core size of z 8 but i guess you know why the uh, this molecule can still go through the um, z 8 because you know z 8 uh, framework is relatively flexible right and then the um so the this uh, car molecule can still go into it and and the solvent we use here is this ethanol so i'm sure you sent a couple of slides on the results so now we have a the uh, kind of uh, um, selectivity in this case is that and then and in anti-america excess so that's a, a stand for the uh, selectivity right so if you have for, 
if you have a higher E, and then that means you know the the memory has a higher selectivity, right? So you can see that uh, you know the E you know actually a decrease with uh, with uh, permission time, you know the and then initially we got like a 75, 70, uh, over 75 E, and, and then the now uh, eight hours you know we only got like 50, less than 50, right? So that's flux also uh, when going down the other uh, going up, you know, and the and also we we trying to you know see whether we can actually make a larger area of the membrane. So in this case, you know, uh, we try to put the nanoparticles, not maybe, uh, more particles, you know, um, into into the poly uh, sulfur membrane uh, matrix, right? So that's the, um, what the membrane looks like, as so you can see a lot of particles in there, and then the uh, cross-section of there is a lot of particles. So we can incorporate a lot of particles in the, uh, in the polymer, so, you know, 30, 40 percent of the uh, crystals in the uh, in the um, uh, polymers. So, so in terms of separation, we still uh, look at the phenylethylene, you know, and uh, so that's the kind of a schematic. So it's a mechanism, right? So it's the affinity, you know, and, and then the facilitated transport uh, mechanism. All right, and then we we observe this similar uh, phenomena. You know, the um, the initially we got a pretty good E, you know, almost a hundred percent, you know, especially with a twenty percent loading, more of loading, and then with a ten percent or thirty percent is lower. So that's really quite interesting because you know if you have a higher loading and then you may have lots of defects. I guess you know lower uh, loading is just not enough, and then and then we, we observe uh, when you have a, a different concentration on the feet, and then more concentrated. Uh, um, and then we have higher flux, and the E is uh, decreased slightly. So, um, the and also the membrane thickness, right? and it's not surprising, right? So you, when you have a thick membrane, and then you have a, a higher selectivity and then lower um, flux, kind of, right? And then, but the problem is how you know uh, why the, uh, the selectivity E decreases with permeation time, right? And then we're trying to understand this, you know, and then we uh, look. Uh, uh, look at the, the another membranes. So the, uh, the CD, you know, sacrodectin morph, you know, with the PS membranes. So basically, we, we did exactly the same thing. And before we put part, um, particle in in, in the uh, PS. So we look at different uh, CD. That's the uh, alpha, beta, and the gamma. And they have a different size, different cavity size. Okay, and then so we we in this case, you know, we look at uh, the uh, the um, the, the 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 current molecules here, okay, and then the um, you look at we 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 realize that uh, you know maybe the solvent is important, you know, so that's why we look at the solvent effects, you know, especially in this case we use S, uh, he, uh, hexing, right, and uh, so when we use the hexing, we found that we got much uh, uh, more stable, you know, a flux and a much more stable the uh, uh, E, but uh, when we use ethanol or methanol, and then we got we see the uh, the E drops, right, and then flux increase. So that's actually indicating you know the solvent polarity is very important on the chiral separation. Especially you know we needed to use a, uh, uh, a solvent which has a very different uh, uh, polarity, you know, uh, to the uh, um, the chiral mo chiral um, molecules, and, and then you you can get a, a good uh, you know, uh, stable you know, uh, selectivity. Right. So that's the, uh, what we found in, in the experiment, and uh, so let me just uh, summarize. So what I have talked about, you know, so basically we, we look at the uh, north with different channel um, structure, one dimensional, three dimensional. So they have a total connectivity, and then so uh, has a uh, some um, selectivities. But uh, you know when when we have a uh, uh, other cation in there, so proton connectivity decrease, right? And now we also look at the uh, 2D um, uh, graphene based membranes, you know, uh, for the membrane distillation and uh, evaporation, and, and then ethanol uh, dehydration. And then, and then finally, uh, so uh, I, uh, I show you an example about the chiral separation. So how we can construct the membranes, and then how, how we can uh, operate the membrane at the, uh, in the, uh, under different conditions to achieve a better performance. So it's about the main finding is that we solving solving effect is so important. Right. So, um, yeah, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, my students and the uh, fellow, you know, uh, 
uh, who have done the work, you know, and uh, and then the uh, collaborator, you know, have lots of uh, uh, people, you know, and, and to uh, working you know, uh, together, you know, on the on the project. You know, I'd like to thank uh, them, you know, for their contribution and their effort, and then the funding from our Australian Research Council. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Huang Ting Wang. That's a great presentation. So I'm sharing it with Right, so, uh, it's very inspiring talk for the a lot of uh, membrane feature, and then different nanomaterial and then nanofluid membrane, also energy hydrogen, which are very much hot topic nowadays. So now it's time to have a Q and A session. So are you are ready? You need a little bit of break. <laughs> Just uh, we can yeah, go yeah, for yeah. Q and A session. Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we have uh, two questions. Uh, first one is the, how do you compare PM fuel cell and SOFC and lithium battery? How do I compare mm -hmm. P fuel cell? Yeah, fuel cell, PM fuel, PM fuel cell, cell. Yeah. and yeah. SOFC. All right, so. Yeah, obviously the uh, PEM fuel cell, you know, operates at a low temperature, right? So polymer based, uh, the FOFC, you know, ceramic uh, fuel cells, right? High temperature, right? So they have a, you know, um, yeah, so depending how you compare, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, they have an advantage and a disadvantage, right? So, and now we cannot really say which one actually good, uh, better than the other, right? So it really depends on the application, right? And then the, uh, Solid oxide fuel cells and, you know, uh, can be operated with uh, more uh, versatile fuels, right? So hydrocarbon and then other you know fuels um, and and then, but the uh, pan fuel cells, you know, so you know, hydrogen is the best uh, fuel, you know, for the, the pan fuel cells. And then if you have a if you want to use other so like a methanol or ethanol, and then there's a lot of problems, right? So it has a yeah, as I said, you know, a, a good a good thing about uh, each of each of them. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. so we have uh, a second question from Yasin Oroji. Yeah. Uh, how using only two electrodes by omitting reference electrodes could it be in agreement with electrochemistry principles using electrochemical workstation? All right. I guess the. I guess the. Uh, this is about the uh, we we the way we measure the ion transport. I guess yeah. I guess the question about that, right? So um, if I understand, I understand the question, from, um, uh, the so it's it's quite interesting because in this case, you know, we we not really trying to get the uh, conductivity and, and and you know using a, you know like. A, in the electrochemistry, people are using impedance, for example, right? So that's the uh, different signals, right? And of course, you know, the, we got different conductivity. But in our case, you know, we actually direct, uh, directly measure the ion transport at a fixed, fixed uh, electro potential, right? So uh, we have two electrodes, yes, the, uh, and then we have a silver, silver chloride electrode uh, at um, each side, right? So if you run the, uh, uh, test at high um, electrode potential, and then of course the electrode reaction will be involved, right? So, so that's the, a. Uh, I guess you know, I'm not sure if I answer your question. So that's the a different uh, way to measure the uh, ion transport, right? We cannot really uh, uh, directly compare the value we got with the uh, the value you know obtained using other method. All right, that's a good answer. So exactly, yeah. you understand uh, his question. So uh, yeah. another question is uh, from Crystal Long. I noticed you recommend the two materials, Geo and MOF. So can you compare the advantage of this uh, two material in separation? All right, so Geo and uh, MOF, MOF yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, there are uh, you know different different membranes. Of course, the channel structure is different. Geo, so you're looking at uh, 
uh, the interlayers, right? Interlayer in the side uh, spacing, you know, so you can tailor that spacing quite easily, right? So that you, you can have a, a, a different size and the morph, you know, morph, you know, you can have a, a one dimensional or three dimensional. And then now if you have a 2D morph, you also have like a 2D structure. So you have a 2D morph, 2D structure, right? And then the, uh, the morph uh, for size is uh, uh, the window size are usually quite small, you know, um, mostly seven, seven nanometer, uh, less than one nanometer, right? And then the, um, yes, the, so uh, again, you know, this really depends on, this is a uh, pretty, uh, 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 so I cannot really just uh, provide uh, a, a generic, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the answer. I guess you know, so which one is uh, work better than the other yeah. one? So just come to my <laughs> previous question. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Also, yeah, I have a uh, one last question before we start the next session. So uh, we uh talking about desalination so desalination still we have uh, used the polyamide based symphony composite our membrane so based on the your material and then your material 2d and the other uh smooth so do you believe this can make a little bit of also improvement of the our uh, polyamide thinking company in the future. Do you have any idea how we can change the, this uh, uh, strong uh, polyamide thinking company membrane using your materials? Yeah, a really, really good question, right? So, I mean, uh, I guess the, um, yeah, I'm not sure, right? So, it's a lot of work, you know, people, you know, are working on the, you know, different materials, right? So, the polyamide has been just working so well, right? So. And uh, everyone knows that uh, the um, I guess you know for the a lot of uh, uh, new kind of relatively new materials, right? So I guess uh, probably we want to look at uh, the uh, uh, different application, right? And uh, I'm not sure it's uh, necessarily you know um, uh, we can use those material to read as uh, putting in mind, right? And then we, we might be able to in further input the point like performance and, and then so uh, I, I don't know whether you know uh, the, uh, eventually uh, there will be other material which actually can uh, perform better than the polyamide you know in all the aspects right <laughs> and then yeah I, I, I don't know yeah <laughs> all right the last question can you briefly answer can you introduce the your update work? on membrane for hydrogen production how high selectivity achieved so far all right so the hydrogen updated yeah. membrane for hydrogen production and yes yeah, so that's basically the uh, membrane based electro electrolyzer right so um well we always still uh, in the early stage so uh trying to uh, understand uh, the membrane structure and you know, how do we uh, tailor the membrane structure, you know, functionalize the membrane structure, uh, chemistry, and then to achieve the selectivity. Right? And uh, as, as you probably noticed that, uh, you know, the, uh, the example I just show you, the, uh, actually, we, we didn't really have a good membrane yet. Yeah. And uh, so we got some selectivity, but uh, the, uh, the proton, uh, Conductivity actually decreased quite significantly. So uh, uh, we, we cannot really use this membrane for our uh, ele ele electrolysis. Yeah, we don't have a right membrane yet. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your very inspiring talk. And uh, please join me thanking thank the thank Professor Huan Ting Wang. So we have uh, next uh, three sessions in five minutes later. So we have a reverse osmosis and then module design, prime management. So please uh, join the next session in five minutes. Thank you for your participation for Professor Huan Ting Wang's uh, plenary speaker. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Shan. See Thank you around. To everyone. Thank you all. <laughs> all right. Bye. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.